You want how much for a used truck? I know, if you're like me, you've seen some crazy, crazy pricing out there, especially in the square body world because things are hot. Well, today, I'm gonna share with you guys what I have paid for the one, two, three, four square bodies I've purchased within the last six months, where I see the market going, and what I think the silver lining is for those of us who are fans of these awesome trucks. Let's go get it. While I don't consider myself to be an authority on square body pricing, I am in the I am in the hunt or on in the hunt or on the I'm on the hunt all the time for killer burbs or blazers and pickup trucks to build particularly of the square body variety. So I do have a pretty good understanding of what they're fetching. And recently I've picked up that one, that one, that one. This one came a couple years ago. And yeah, so let's talk about what the prices are right now. Uh, to begin with, I've purchased my first Blazer, the one that uh, you guys are most familiar with on my channel. When I was in high school, I bought that in 1994, it had 80,000 miles on it. Uh, it was bone stock apart from uh, 33 inch tires and some window tint. And I paid $7,000 for it. And in that regard, not much has changed. I mean, you're still able to build or buy for around that. It just seems, um, it seems tougher to swallow for a lot of people because the truck is now 30, 40, 50 years old. And they're like, how come I'm paying so much for an old truck? Well, because it's an old truck and they don't pay, make them anymore. Uh, so the pricing I paid in the 90s, that was pretty standard for a while. The pricing did drop. Um, these things hadn't reached the nostalgia level yet and they were still available everywhere. Uh, Gov Liquidation and Gov Planet and Iron Planet started liquidating the military versions, which meant that they were available for super cheap if you know how to work the auctions. So all that led to pricing kind of stagnating for a while. These things kind of flew under the radar. Uh, the Gen 1 Broncos in particular garnered all of the, the, the classics and the crazy pricing. I knew it was eventually going to come home on the square body side. I just didn't expect it to take as long as it has. Uh, what we're seeing right now is uh, just this major resurgence in popularity due to guys who are my age who grew up with these trucks, grew up being driven around in these trucks, and honestly now want them themselves. And they've got money and they're willing to pay for it. So let me show you what I have purchased recently. This guy over here was my acquisition just a couple days ago. This is a 73. This is probably the most desirable year you can get. If you're in California, this is a pre-smog variety, meaning that I do not need to worry about smog. While that's not an issue for you guys in other parts of the country, in California, that can dramatically drive up the price. It's also a full convertible, the first year that GM offered the square body with these iconic square body lines. It's a full convertible, it's got the beautiful round eye, and this one in particular is in excellent condition. It was a uh, southwestern US truck, so minimal rust, if anything. I haven't really found any rust. Even in the traditional spots that you'd expect to see it, it's remarkably clean. Body is straight, I've got the doors, I've got the roof, I've got the tailgate, and like I mentioned, there, there's just, there's barely any rust in here. And for, for a build, for a truck like this, I'm gonna be throwing a ton of parts on it anyway. So starting with something that's stripped down like this is actually, it's a win for me. I paid 6,000 for that guy. And while that may seem like crazy to some people, it's a 50 year old classic truck with clean paperwork, clean body, no rust, no crazy history of accidents and repairs. I mean, it's got some stuff, but nothing crazy. There's no, I've got good bones and a good skeleton there to start with. This next one, this is a 1990. This is a 1990 Suburban. This one came fully outfitted. So it's got the rear AC. It's got uh, the small block T uh, 241 transfer case, half ton running gear. Lots of cool stuff. 
I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this one as much as I just couldn't pass it up because it has great parts. It's a barn door. Uh, it's got the beautiful front grille that I've always liked. Between these two, these are my favorites. And uh, this will make a killer parts truck if I don't decide to build it up because it has all the options. I paid $2,000 for this guy right here. The military version came with a one and a quarter ton Dana 60 up front and the 14 bolt full floater with a Detroit in the rear. It's part of the reason that these are so attractive and the fact that it's a one ton frame and a long bed truck. So these are worth money any day of the week. And uh, while 6,000 or 5,000 may seem expensive for a truck that doesn't drive yet, the parts alone in this are probably worth it. And the body too. And being a diesel, also no smog, which in Cali is a big, big deal. Hey, it looks like you like trucks. Well, guess what? So does this guy and so does this channel. So subscribe if you like trucks. So I know $6,000 for a shell and a frame seems like a lot of money. And you know, it's not insignificant when you consider that my first truck was $1,000 was $1,000 more and was running and driving in great condition. But much like anything that is a finite resource, you know, demand is going to drive up the price on these things and there is a lot of demand. I think what we're seeing is a culmination of many, many factors. COVID has driven up the prices of all new vehicles and correspondingly dragged up the prices of used vehicles with it. You've also got uh, square bodies have become the local automotive darling again. They're, they're getting a lot of attention. Um, whether it's due to channels like mine or, or, or the fact that there's a lot of big channels out there that are doing, doing builds of Suburbans and Blazers because basically they're starting to get the attention and recognition that they truly deserve. I've, uh, I've personally been waiting for years for the squares to, uh, to rise to that level of collector status where people were throwing crazy money at them just because they thought they were gonna disappear. We do have a large pool. These things were made from 73 to basically 91, um, not counting the first gen, uh, 69, 68 through 72. So you can find these trucks everywhere. They're gonna be, you know, hit and miss as to the condition you find them in, but they're out there. What we're seeing now is the attention of the automotive industry moving over to them. There's been a couple of very big sales um, that has gone viral and, and therefore people are judging the, the, the basis of their pricing on some of these viral builds, which I think is ridiculous. But if you notice, there, there are trucks out there that when people are asking crazy prices, they sit. They sit for a long time. And so, don't be alarmed if you're seeing guys asking $20,000 for a bare bones stock, um, slightly rusty K5 Blazer. It's gonna sit there. If it doesn't, some sucker bought it. So just sit tight and wait because there are deals out there. Now, on the flip side of that, um, if you're watching my channel, I guarantee that you have an inclination to build one of these, or you at least at least uh, have the basic set of skills to be able to do some work on them. And that's where the real deals are. You see, you can buy a truck that's not running, whether it's you know missing a transmission or it just it hasn't started and the owner's moving on from it. You can still buy those trucks for pretty cheap. I mean, that, that square body Suburban I bought out there for $2,000, yeah, it needs some work, but could I get that thing running and driving for a couple grand? Absolutely. And then I've got a $4,000 square body Suburban barn doors that runs and drives. It's not gonna be a showstopper. It's not gonna have all the stuff that, uh, that I put in my um, K30 burb, but it's $4,000. When I built my K30 burb, the parts list came in at over 75K. So recognize that you have a huge swing of pricing. Um, I don't foresee it slowing down for a while. I think this, this new crazy pricing is here to stay. 
And uh, I kind of, I welcome it. You know, if, if people want to spend money on these builds, I'm more than happy to build trucks for that need. Uh, my channel has always been focused on giving the everyday man the tools and tips and tricks he needs to build his truck like I did. I am the everyday man with, with no formal training or official skills. I just turn wrenches and after turning enough wrenches, you end up with a truck that looks like that. So you can still build these things. Don't be completely discouraged if you don't have a ton of experience building. They're very, very, very simple to work on. Parts are plentiful. Aftermarket companies have built stuff for them forever. And you get the joy that if you build a truck, you've got one of the best platforms for building an off-road vehicle. Jeeps are too small. Broncos were too small and had strange front suspension. Um, the new vehicles are all too complicated. You know, the square body is very, very unique in its position in the market. There isn't a whole lot of other trucks like them. The other benefit we have is all of the parts from these various builds, whether it's a three x three or whether it's a, whether it's a Suburban or a K20 or a Blazer, a lot of the parts from, from doors to roofs, to hoods, to front clips, to axles, they're all interchangeable. So parts, I say this with a, with a grain of salt, parts really shouldn't be a problem for you. In response to this uh, newfound attention, um, I roll, recently rolled out a new product called Merrick's Garage Square Body Consulting. And before you click away, let me explain what it is. I get inundated with emails from people or messages or IMs asking me to uh, provide some insight into their build or their parts list or how did you do that or how did you, how did you do this. Um, I, I endeavor to answer as many of those as I can. They often are asking the same general questions and I will preface this by saying all of the answers are on my YouTube channel from how to LS swap a truck to how to put an axle in it to how to link it to you know what to do when you roll it. I, I've got hundreds of videos on square body. So if you have a question, I guarantee that it's in my channel somewhere. Now that said, I do recognize that that's a lot of videos to wade through. And so if you want to spend an hour with me, uh, I offer build consulting. It's 250 bucks for an hour. We'll sit down, send me your build list, send me your questions, send me your objectives. I go through it all before our meeting. We sit down on the phone, we go through your objectives, we get you a clear plan of attack, we figure out where you should spend your money, where you shouldn't spend your money, and uh, yeah, you, you've got an hour to pick my brain and to get my input either on your recent acquisition or what you're looking for or the next step in finishing your build. What, what I hate to see is people buying these vehicles with the expectation they're gonna drive like a modern truck and then being very disappointed when they drive like absolute crap and throwing tons of money on them to make them drive well without really understanding what makes these things drive so poorly in stock form and how to make them really perform in aftermarket modified form. So if you are interested in getting in my head about how I build these, go check out my website, merricksgarage.com. I have the square body consulting in my store uh, along with the seat brackets. And uh, this isn't a hard sell. This, is, this isn't to say stop sending me emails. It's just to say like, hey, if you have questions that require uh, a more in-depth conversation, I'm more than happy to have those conversations. And what I provide at the end of it too is I'll give you the whole parts list. It's, it's like a 200 list, 200 item list of everything I could think of that I put in the Suburban, from, from fittings to, um, to alternators to the bracket I use for the air conditioner. It's all in there. Uh, I don't disseminate it publicly because, you know, it took a lot of work to create it. Uh, but for those of you who do want to do some consulting with me, you will get that at the end of the meeting. Prices go up, prices go down. There is a ton of supply of these things. So don't sweat this too bad. If you're out there shopping for one, you will find one. Just persevere. If you wanna pick my brain about consulting and, uh, or not consulting, but pick my brain about how I build these things and get my input on what you should start first, go check out my web store. I'll put the link down below, merricksgarage.com. Go look at that and uh, hit me up if you're interested in chatting and go out and find your build and start hammering on it. Merrick's Garage.